Oh my gosh, my mic is really loud. Yes. All right. We've got the Wonder Box today. Emily Demaras is excited. Okay. So if this is your first time here, this is the Wonder Box. There is something in it. I'm going to shake it a couple times, and I'm going to take some guesses, and we're going to figure out what's inside. Are you ready? Here we go. What do you think? What do you think, Roxy? Something, in, something inside a can. Ooh, like, like she's got a double inside, inside. Very meta. I like it. Yes, Camilla. What is it? Candles. Oh, my gosh, you got it on the second guess. Wow. A great miracle occurred. All right. We have Hanukkah candles, yes. Good thinking, okay. So this is a box of Hanukkah candles and you might notice there's some candles missing which is why it made an extra rattling sound which I think is what Roxy was hearing, an extra rattle inside the rattle, right? So why do you think there's some candles missing from my box of Hanukkah candles? Because it's the, f yes, because tonight will be the fourth night of Hanukkah. Yeah, so in my family, we light Hanukkah candles. My family celebrates Hanukkah. I know there's some other families here at UUCDC that also celebrate Hanukkah. Tonight will be the fourth night of Hanukkah. And so today I'm going to tell the story of Hanukkah. So a very long time ago in the land of Israel, the land of Israel was ruled by the wicked king Antiochus. He's the villain in our story today. He's the bad guy. And the wicked king, Antiochus, he wanted everyone in the kingdom to have the same religion and the same culture. And in fact, he wanted everyone to have the same religion and culture as he did. And he practiced the Greek religion. He believed in the Greek gods, and he had a Greek culture. Culture is like the kinds of foods you eat and the clothes you wear and the language you speak. That's your culture. So he wanted everyone to have Greek culture and Greek religion. Now the Jews who were living in Israel at the time, they didn't want to have to give up their Jewish culture and they certainly didn't want to have to give up their Jewish faith. They didn't want to have to stop reading their holy book, the Torah. They didn't want to have to stop celebrating their Jewish holidays. And they didn't want to have to stop worshiping in their holy temple. But King Antiochus, he took over the temple. He filled it with statues of Greek gods, and he made it dirty and icky. He desecrated it. It had been sacred and holy, and he made it less sacred. He desacreded it, desecrated. That's a really fancy word. So you can remember that for later in life when you're taking big tests. Desecrated, desacreded it desecrated. We'll come back to it. Anyway, so he made their temple icky. Now, of course, this made the Jewish people mad, but there were way more Greek people in Israel at the time than there were Jewish people. But they decided that they were going to rise up and they were going to fight for their religious freedom. So a small group of Jewish people called the Maccabees decided that they were going to fight. And they were led by a man named Mattathias and then later by his son Judah. Judah Maccabee. And even though they were small in number, they were mighty in spirit. And despite the odds being stacked against them, a lot of things happened. We're going to skip over that part. And they won. They took back the temple. Now, when the people came into the temple, they were so heartbroken to see their beautiful temple desecrated. Remember, I said we were going to come back to that word, desecrated. It was so sad. Now, can you imagine, like, look around our beautiful sanctuary. Many of us love this space. We love looking out the windows. We like the pretty um, quilts on the walls back here. Can you imagine if we walked in one Sunday morning and these beautiful windows were broken? Can you imagine if maybe there was, like, graffiti on the wall and it said words that were, like, against our beliefs? That would be heartbreaking. That would be so sad. So all the Jewish people got together and they cleaned up the sanctuary. They made it pretty again. 
But then they had to do some rituals to make it holy. And one of those was to light a very special candle, a very special menorah with oil, special holy oil. But they only had a little bit of oil. And they had to keep this oil lit for a long time. It had to be lit all the time. But they only had a little bit. They only had enough for one day. But they lit it anyway. And it stayed lit. They sent someone out to get more oil. It was going to take a really long time. And the candle, the menorah, stayed lit. The people went to get more, and they came back. It took eight days. And the little bit of oil stayed lit, even though no one expected it to. It was only enough to last for one day, really. But it stayed lit for eight days. And by the time they came back with more oil, um, it seemed like a miracle had occurred. That little bit of oil had stayed lit for eight days, and that is the miracle of Hanukkah. So every year, Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah. Hanukkah means dedication. And so at this time of year, the celebration of Hanukkah is the dedication or rededication of the temple and the celebration of the miracle of the oil. It's also a time when we can remember fighting bravely for justice and fighting bravely for religious freedom. That's the story of Hanukkah. Thank you for listening to my story today.